Ah, greetings friend and welcome back. Hello again. Whew, it's been a slog but I've saved up all my credits and I'm ready for an upgrade. Congratulations commander. Which ship can I interest you in today? Well, I've thought this over long and hard and I think the Asp is the ship for me. Ah, the Asp Explorer, an excellent vessel. No, no, I want the Scout. <coughs> what? Yep, I've done quite a bit of research and I reckon this is definitely the ship for me. But, yep, it's got a well-shielded power plant, enough weapons Gregor, to off the Gregor, bring the Asp to the dock. Space, no, no, he wants the Scout. Yeah, yes, I know. Just hurry up so and bring it around, we can finally so get rid of it. In short, it's by far the best ship in its price category. Yes, okay. If you would just like to confirm your purchase here, please. Okay. Great, thanks. I'll go and pick it up. Okay, goodbye. There's one born every minute. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the Asp Scout, but with all the stuff that's going on around it, I kind of couldn't resist. Now, one of the defining features of the Asp Scout compared to the Explorer is the twin engines at the back, and having a look at them as pretty much as close as I can get to, they're probably a good two, two and a half meters in diameter, but they're a bit of a strange shape, actually. It's sort of conical, but going down on that one and coming up on the other one, so they're not exactly um, symmetrical. So as we say hello to Commander Headless, as per normal, looking not headless today, you can see she's had some upgrades, she's got cybernetic eyes and a few cybernetic facial features. They don't actually crop up from the inside, you can just see that it's just the standard weirdo head that's a bit freaky to uh, look into. Sorry, Commander. So hopping into our familiar location, you can see that just like the Asp X, uh, the Asp Scout has an amazingly great view. So much glass in this huge canopy which allows you to see in every possible direction, which is one of the things I absolutely love about this series of ships. Now as we take this up to the surface for a bit of interest, we'll start as always in the front. So there's this hollow projection here of the ship itself, which is about the size of a dinner plate as per normal. The actual ship itself is probably my hand width spread. So a six foot tall guys, hand width in the, in the size for the actual ship. And then we have this um, large dashboard, which is actually interesting because, well, it's been a while since I did the Asp Explorer video, but you can see this one's got lots of scratches and um, kind of dirt on it, which I'm not sure that the Asp Explorer actually had. Anyway, it looks good because it looks like it's worn in. The hollow projector in the front is rectangular, as you can see, probably, well, I'll trace it with my hand for you. It's here like that, comes down like this, probably about 60 centimeters in width and about 40 to 45 centimeters in height. The rest of the dash is relatively plain. As you can see, there's some vents and things up here. And if we head around to the front and duck ourselves down, we can see that it's also pretty plain underneath, just holed up by these two um, large struts. We'll go and have a look at the uh, co-pilot's chair in a minute. Coming around this side now, you can see that this projection is, well, it's relatively the same as the other one. I'd say that the entire spaceport is probably about that in size, so roughly 20, 25 centimeters. And then we have the side screen here, which is kind of the size of about a 15 inch laptop. Then we have our grab handles over here, which these are a decent size grab handle. Good size for a person to actually hold on to if they needed to maneuver around in zero G, which clearly is what they're for. Now while we're here at the front, I'll show you something interesting. Since the last update where this dash has actually changed, I'm not sure if you can see that on yours, but see how each of those icons actually has four icons behind it? Well, that's not a 3D effect. That's just actually from the front, like a parallax effect like you would have on your phone screen. But uh, yeah, certainly an interesting thing that I didn't really see from um, from this location, you can't really see, I guess. The other thing which I have looked at before in other ships is the Starport Services menu. Now it's a very large curved screen, which is both curved towards you this way, as well as that way. If I put my hands on the edges of it, it is about that sort of size, and the bottom is kind of there. But the thing is that it has quite a severe curve on it, which if you can see from the side there, but the curve is made up of individual flat panels. So you can see that it sort of gets, there's a corner right here, and then there's a panel there and a panel down here. So that's kind of how they've done that one with a secondary panel behind it, which is entirely black and feathered out on the edges. So that's how they do that sort of screen effect, which as I say, I've shown you once before, but I thought it'd be interesting 
to show you again, especially after the latest update. The other thing which might be of interest, which I haven't actually uh, shown you before, is where the brackets are for the weapons and uh, dash systems. So they float slightly in front of the two holograms. So if I put the ship hologram here, this controller, let's say, will be the hologram. And then we have the starport hologram here. Then those brackets kind of live here in the middle of space. So they do sit a bit proud towards you from those two holo projections out of interest. Moving further around to the sides of the ship now. So you can see obviously a couple of little access panels there. Maintenance not accessible while engine is running. Having said that, what's behind it? Uh, nothing, ow. It's a uh, flat panel, as you can see, which basically just leads to the outside. So I'm not really sure what exactly could fit in there. There's probably about three or four inches worth of space in there and not much else besides. Access to systems, uh, RCS 04 and 08. Let's chuck our head through there. So again, you can't see much more in there other than just a bit of an extension out of the floor platform. The floor again is made of the composite sort of plasticky kind of material with a blush, brushed aluminium on the sides and a good little bit of damage that you can see there from a bit of wear and tear. So I do like the way this ship looks that it has actually been, you know, through space a couple of times. These strange CRT screens uh, make a return again in all of the Lacon ships pretty much. And this one is the same one that we've seen before showing Core 1, Core 2 and not really explaining what that means. There is also a copy of that display there, although it's been a bit vertically squashed. So uh, you can't really see it all that well, but it is identical and flat. Over here it says systems diagnose online, system scan pending. And then there is a little dial there and presumably some sort of a switch, although it is teeny weeny. And uh, if you yanked on that one too hard, it would definitely snap. The handle on the side would allow you to steady yourself and there's no handle on the other side. Down here we have our fire extinguisher, which is about, you know, a foot, foot and a half in length, and I can't get any closer to it due to my daughter's homeschooling station. And then we'll move further back here. So there are two other grab handles here, both good human-sized grab handles. I'm pretty much standing on the ground, and that's where they are. And then we'll head through the door in just a minute. First, we'll just look over here. So pretty much a repeat of the panels that you've seen on the other side, um, saying the same things and presumably having nothing behind them again. But I'm trying not to reset the camera because I want to try and give you an impression of how large the cockpit actually is. So if I'm standing at the hole here, let me just trace the hole on my floor. So that's where that is. Then here's the grab handle for the door. The door itself is here. I'd be running my hand along it. Then along here is the bent wall. Then here you would have that um, computer screen with the panel underneath. And then back coming around to the rear of the captain's seat, which I would be now touching the back of. So that gives you an impression within my real, real space, uh, how big the rear aspect of this cockpit actually is. And, you know, obviously, if you wanted to, you could actually head down this hole. You'd grab onto these, these handles, probably like that, while you're standing on the edge. And then you'd be able to, you know, go down to the, uh, the ladder and climb on down. Although it is, <laughs> you know, vertical and there's not a huge place to put your feet here. I'd say that's probably, I don't know, a five inch length rail. Uh, and again, nothing through it. We'll look more through the back in just a second. Right, we'll head downstairs now. So now having finished my climb down the ladder, we find ourselves in the co-pilots area. You can see that down here, it says do not access while running with a little hatch and through it is of course nothing. We have another one of these fire extinguishers. This one I can stick my head through, but you know, cylinder, not particularly exciting. Here we have another grab handle. These ones are a bit lower than the other ones. Remember the other ones were kind of in this area where there's clearly a plate for them. And uh, we have a copy of the screens, an identical console here, exactly the same as the one above. And here we have a little panel where you can see the uh, illuminated aspects of it should have been lined up better to the actual background. And you can read that for yourself although it is fairly low res and there is another panel saying maintenance only and through that is once again nothing the co-pilot seat just like the pilot seat upstairs is mounted on an immovable stationary plinth and there's a couple of little hatches on the floor that uh, do not go anywhere as we have seen before there is a copy of the dashboard that lives upstairs however that one up there is about the size of a single bed 
And this one here, I'm literally touching the edges of now, so it's probably 45 to 50 centimeters in width. And I'd say probably about 15 to 20 in depth. Obviously nothing projected on it at the moment. And it is held up by this single arm, which clips through where the feet go and hooks in there into the ground. So we may as well start going through the doors by starting downstairs, just for something different. So here obviously you can say, uh, see it says close while in flight mode and a bit of a keypad, O and C buttons, presumably open and closed, just a guess. And the bulkhead doors themselves go from about there to about there. So certainly large enough. Uh, you can see there that the light is floating off the wall. So <laughs> that would need to be fixed for space legs. Otherwise, the uh, door height is, yeah, about as far as I can reach. So let's say mm, 2.2 meters, roughly speaking. So, whoosh, stepping through the door, we find this. Now, this is actually rather interesting because what you can see there is indeed a door. And I'll see how far I can get close to that or how close I can get to that. But uh, you can see that it's definitely a human sized uh, door and, and it is in scale. Uh, but where on earth does it go? And I think this is probably the only ship that has one of these doors that's just sitting there, modelled, uh, but isn't actually active or going anywhere. Before I try and jank myself over there, let's uh, stick our faces through the hard points, and we see, as per normal, the interiors of the hard points uh, that come out underneath the ship, and you can see that they sit directly behind the door, and in fact, once Space Legs comes along, if I just touch the sides of these, yeah, the, uh, well, basically the only space that's actually behind this door is kind of just past this uh, cutout panel here, about three inches past it, and here just past where the Lacon um, bulkheads keypad thing actually sits. So definitely these doors don't need to be this big, or the hard points would need to be moved apart a little bit by the time we get to Space Legs otherwise. I mean, look, you can shimmy down this corridor, but, you know, it's, it's just my shoulder height, a uh, shoulder width. I'd be sort of touching the both hard points as I was walking towards that door over there. So without breaking myself, this is about as close as I can actually get to uh, that door over there. You can see in front of it is an angled um, entryway that's probably three and a half by five meters. Um, and then, yeah, that door that's just sitting in the middle of nowhere, ready for a bit of space legs action. But obviously nothing else in there. From this vantage point, you can see the other hard points up the top there, and the interiors of some, whoop, tracking, the interiors of some of those uh, panels, which have obviously got that low texture, uh, the low rest texture on them, just as a placeholder. And other than that, we can see the two doors in sequence and where they are positioned one above each other. And it is about a story uh, worth of height. As that crate goes overhead, that looks pretty cool. So now climbing up the ladder again to upstairs, uh, there definitely needs to be some railing around here. That's an OHS hazard. <laughs> and then heading back over to the door upstairs, uh, we can stick our head through it, even from just resetting it over at the fireplace as I did. So sticking my head through this, we can start to see a little bit of the interior upstairs. So you can see those long rails that the hard points come out on and then poke out the front. We can see some of the interior, uh, again, the panelling that we have seen from downstairs, although, yeah, in terms of detail. And again, that space down there that you can see um, from downstairs a bit more. Obviously, that's where we were downstairs uh, and looking in towards the rear. Otherwise, there's not a huge amount to see from this vantage point, so it might be time to take her out. Now, as we head back upstairs to do our auto launch sequence, I've noticed that there aren't any landing gear here, so I wonder if they pop in when you take off. Uh, that'd be a no. Now this is the second time that we have seen no landing gear. The first one is, remember, in the previous video where we explored the Diamondback Scout. Equally, there's something else missing. That's right, the cargo bay. So this is very strange. They've, uh, they've removed a whole bunch of stuff out of the interior view of this ship. Right, so now we're clear of the station. Let's uh, get some light on these things and see if we can deploy them. All right, so that does actually show up. Let's see if we deploy the cargo scoop, if that actually turns up. Nope, clearly not either the landing gear or the cargo scoop. That is very interesting. 
Now we can see obviously from here there are landing gear and it's the same style as the Asp Explorer with the kind of fist shaped landing gear and there are four of them. Yeah, but obviously they just haven't put them in for the interior view, which is really odd. And the cargo scoop is obviously there as well and deploys, you know, as per normal as you would expect. And if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that that ship entry door, what it looks like, would come over the front or over the top of that central large um, square, which from this vantage point is about, yeah, about five by five or four by four um, meters wide so the whole thing i would imagine would come down and then you know you'd be able to use an elevator system to get back up in there and that's probably how you would get up into the ship and anyway there we can see the interior of the cargo bay uh, there are plenty of other videos exploring the cargo bay in greater detail so i won't bother too much but look on the uh, leading edge of the actual bit that holds the cargo bay in there appear to be some very large hinges in there. So <laughs> what on earth that would be for, I have no idea. And there's also hinges, corresponding hinges on the rear. Um, alrighty. So there you have it, Commanders. An interesting uh, interior simply because of the fact that we have some things missing and some things added that we don't see on the other ships. Now, as I say, well, despite the name of the ship and its ship tag that you can see on the screen right now, I don't hate the ASP Scout. I just feel like there are better choices if you're going to spend, you know, near four million for the base um, of something. I would suggest that there are better options out there, but it might be a favorite chip. Let me know in the comments below if it is and why, because kind of like the Beluga, I don't really understand it. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you in the black. Fly safe, commanders.